Hello, my name is Philip Bloom and I'm excited to be bringing you, finally, a review of a camera I should have done around eight months ago, but just never had the time or opportunity to do it. But it's here, it's never too late to do a review on a camera, especially if it's still very, very much current. So don't worry, it's not a review of a DV camera, it is the Canon C100. If not now, when I won't wait for an afterlife, if not now, when can I taste you upon my life? Oh. I'm a massive fan of the Canon C300. I was very much underwhelmed by the specs when I first saw that camera, and yet it proved to be an amazing camera and one I have used so, so much. And it's become a very, very popular camera, in, especially in UK broadcast. So when I saw the specs of the C100, I was like, ah, even more underwhelmed, but a fraction of the price to C300. So when the C100 was actually announced, um, I got a lot of messages and bitter, angry people who were saying, why did they not put in a 422 50 megabit codec? Why did they not put in a viewfinder that is good as a C300? Why did they not put in slow motion? In fact, 1080p slow motion, not 720 like the C300. Why did they not do all of these things? And I said, well, that would make it better than the C300. How can they bring out a budget version of the C300 with more features? That makes no sense. First impressions, it's small. It's, it's like they've put the C300 on a little bit too high a wash and put a tumble dryer on straight away. It's very light and I've put on a little dinky 40 millimeter pancake to emphasize just how small it is. In fact, if I take off the handle, which does house something quite important, which is the XLR input, this is a very small camera and very light. Of course, to get to know a camera, you need to shoot with it. And in England right now, we have a heat wave. They say it's gonna last a month, we'll see. And down in Brighton, I've never ever filmed a camera review down in Brighton. That's not true. Hello, my name is Philip Bloom, and today I'm gonna to take a look at this camera here. I'm down at Brighton Beach, and I love filming here because it's just so colorful, so much going on. And I've done a few tests down here in the past. So I've got my Miller tripod. A uh, selection of lenses. Currently on here is the 100, the 400 millimeter. And it's great for sort of sniping off shots, people in the distance. And because it's bright, I've got the Zacuto Z Finder on here. It's uh, an adapted frame that we've got that just slides on. Without it, it is going to be hard to see the screen. Absolutely essential for this camera. With my C300, I am able to use my viewfinder because it is actually really quite usable. I don't have waveforms in it or anything like that, but it's not too bad and you can get away with it. This is not as good as a C300 viewfinder. It's a much lesser quality. It looks similar to the XF100 one, which is really hard to get any sort of critical focus with. That's why the loop is essential. It's a real shame they've lost that viewfinder. For me, it was one of the best things about the C300. So I'm shooting in 25p, progressive. It also has 50i interlace. Uh, it also has a, a switchable mode to go into NTSC, so you can shoot 24p. What the camera doesn't have, though, is a slow motion mode. There is no 50p. There is no 50p. Not even a 720. There is no 720. There is no slow motion mode. Interestingly, through a bit of an accident, James Miller and myself discovered that if we took the 50i, and it's a lot easier to do 50i than with 60i because I don't have to use all that pull down nonsense because we are in Powerland, which is 25p, 50i. Uh, we're able to get some really nice slow motion through Adobe Premiere CC. Now, I've not tried it with any other edit suites apart from or edit NLEs, apart from Final Cut 7. As we go from normal speed down to slow motion, you can see it looks pretty damn good. This is down to a couple of factors, really. The first one is the camera records everything in a 50i stream, whether it's 25p or 50i. And there should be a metadata flag telling the NLE what this is, whether it's 25p or 50i. In fact, the way Premiere seems to work, it doesn't seem to be flagging it correctly. 
what I have to do manually myself is actually interpret the footage as progressive in the normal 25p otherwise I'm going to get some nasty artifacts but with the 50i if I want the slow motion I simply put it on my 25p timeline I do not change it to progressive I leave it as upper field first because it seems that Premiere is seeing the fields as frames and interpolating hence 50 fields is becoming 50 frames it isn't perfect but it's better than no slow motion But by slowing it down by half, you are going to actually reduce your bitrate by half. So it is around 24 megabits a second. It is a variable bitrate, so it can go higher, it can go lower. 20, if it's coming up as 24, you're only going to get it down to around 12 megabits a second, which is, it's going to fall apart when you start grading it. Now, it's not perfect, and you are messing around in post to make it work. But it does work, and the results are actually pretty damn good. In fact, I'm going to show you this. This is a little test between some cameras, the same shot in slow motion. See what you think. So we're using this as our baseline shot. It's the C125P, 1080p, normal speed, full HD. And when it does slow down in 50i, it's a very challenging shot. It's a lot of fine detail and there is some fizzing for sure going on there. So just be very careful of what you shoot. And if you try to either deinterlace it, turn it into progressive via interpreter's progressive, or reverse the fields, it just doesn't work. The 5D3 slow motion 720p, not that great. The C300 is pretty good. But the clear winner for slow motion is of course going to be the FS100 because it does do it 1080p in camera. Why is the 1 third inch chip Canon XA25 thrown in here? Well, I had one with me because I am just finishing a review of it. I could be wrong, but I think this is the only Canon professional camera that shoots 1080p slow motion properly in other crank. Internally. See how good it looks? Let's have in every Canon camera please. No, not just Canon camera, every single camera. It actually looks pretty good considering, but I'd rather not have to do it in post. I'd rather have it in camera and there is no real reason. I know it's a business decision to keep it away from the C100 so the C300 has that, but look, come on, it has the 50 megabits 422. ADC HD has a 1080p implementation for overcrank so let's do it 50p and 60p so put it in there it's not got the bit rate and it's not got the color space so there's no real reason they took away too much i understand certain things but don't take away my slow motion we like slow motion because everything looks better in slow motion give it back i'm sure you can do it with firmware please I just want the slow motion better please a little bit like the C300, it is an added on unit to have the XLR. The C300 has the monitor on it as well, whereas the monitor here is at the back. So you have this single lead here and you have your XLRs. It's really nice. It just means if you want to go in really stealthy mode, you lose your XLRs, but you still have a 3.5mm input to put on, say, a Rode VideoMic Pro. Really, XLR is the way to go. And to be honest with you, a handle is kind of essential. So if you're moving up from a DSLR into a actual camcorder with all the things that come with a camcorder, which is XLRs and proper displays and whatnot, there's not that many cameras in that low, sort of low end price bracket. Really, it's just like two. There's this and the Sony FS100. For me, what this camera has over an FS100, number of key things, it is much smaller. It does have a much better screen. And most importantly, it has ND filters. It has an ND filter wheel, unlike the FS, so we have to use screw-on filters or matte box. These features are really important. The ND is going to change how you shoot and the ease of shooting, especially if you've never used them before and you're moving up from the DSLRs. This feature alone 
is essential. Children keep on dreaming When you work I will be gone but the FS100 has 1080p built-in slow motion, so you don't have to use post workarounds to get your own results. It does it in camera, and it's always better to do it in camera. So if slow motion is important to you, look at the FS100. If it's really that important to you, you should be looking at the FS700 anyway with its super slow motion. One of the most important things for me about using a camera, owning a camera, is ease of use, knowing how to use it without having to get a manual. I'm a guy, I do not read instructions, even if it takes a hundred times longer to find out how to do something, I won't read a manual. But you don't need a manual with this because it just makes sense. Yeah, I have experience with a C300, but even with that camera, within a day, I knew where everything was. This camera is a very simple camera to use. I don't need somebody to show me which buttons to press, which knob to fiddle with, and which nipple to tweak. It's all very obvious to make the camera work. This beast of a lens here is the 100-400 Canon. It's an EF mount only, so you can use Canon glass, and any glass that has a flange distance which is greater than a Canon mount, so you're talking about like Nikon glass. This is the Canon 17 to 55. Optically, it's, it's nice. Mechanically, not so good. It's a bit fiddly and it moves in and out on the zoom, but the fact is it has IS. And the focal length of 17.55 is an, it's a, sort of the equivalent of around 24 to 70 if you get on full frame. So it's going to give you a nice wider shot and a nice sort of portrait on the end of the lens. It's not a big telephoto lens like this, but you can't go wide in it. There are no lenses which are constant aperture which have that full range. There's always a compromise. But this lens I have used so much on DSLRs and on the C series cameras okay. because it gives me the IS for handheld. So handheld, take it off the Kessler, quick release plate, handle, nice and easy. We have the controls to our hand there. And with the Zakuto Z Finder, I'm ready to shoot handheld straight away. And because I've got the IS on, let me adjust film bit of James. I'm able to get some pretty steady stuff. And to show you how good the IS is, I'm actually going to put on that beast of lens back on this and see how steady I can get it. Forever I will stay. Lord knows that's what I'm dreaming of. And I'm trying this is an extremely unlikely situation to shoot handheld with this lens. It's not what it's designed for. But it does show you you can get some fairly decent results with IS, and if you want to get even better results handheld, you are going to need to look at a rig of some sort for longer lenses. After a while, not just with this lens, with any lens, fatigue will set in handheld, it always does, and a rig will help you. There's different rigs for different cameras, counterbalance ones and non-counterbalance ones. I do like to keep it as simple as possible though. When I shoot with my DSLRs and I use the handheld rig, which when I'm shooting handheld, I have to use the rig, I use a very basic one from Zakuza, the target shooter. And effectively, this is what I have on here. I have the C100 base plate on here with a, a mini uh, quick release plate from Kessler, so it goes straight onto the actual tripod. And when I want to go handheld, I've got this part of it. It simply attaches on here, and it gives me another point of contact, which means handheld can be a lot easier and fatigue doesn't set in as quickly. There is another configuration though that I can do with it. This is the grip relocator. I'm gonna put this on here and I'm gonna take off the actual hand grip from the C100. Plonk it out, put it onto here, screw it on. Plug it in here. And now we have Zakuto's Predator, which gives you the controls down here. And this is the way to shoot handheld for long periods of time. All my controls are at my fingertips, and I can start and stop without taking my hands away from the rig. This camera has two ways of helping you get your exposure. You have the zebras, which obviously are very useful, but even more than that, we have 
lovely waveform. So you can tell when we're under and over. The only downside is we lose our meters. Whoops, excuse me. Let me do that. But this helps us judge our exposure really, really well. And it's a lovely feature to have on the camera. Only on the screen, not in the EVF. The camera records on SD cards. You have two slots, so you can have it dual recording or continuous. And with the codec being really quite compressed, really heavily compressed, you're able to record a lot of footage on a card. The low light is ridiculously amazing. I didn't expect it to be any less than that. It's the same sensor, apparently. It says so on the internet, must be true, as the C300. It could be complete nonsense, in which case feel free to write in the comments below. But that sensor is incredible. It's an 850 rated sensor, Super 35, looks amazing at its native sensitivity and it looks amazing at pretty much anything up to around 6,400. Above that, you start seeing some noise. Well, you can see noise lower than that if you start underexposing, but at 6,400 with correct exposure, it looks great. In fact, you can push it, well, if you need to get the shot, especially on a documentary, as high as a 20,000 ISO, but if it's gonna be heavily underexposed even at that, it's gonna look absolutely like a big pile of poo. It's nice to have that ability and give us incredibly creative flexibility. High ISOs, fantastic. This does it beautifully. When I looked through the viewfinder, I was gutted because it isn't anywhere near as good. It looks like it's the same viewfinder as my XF105, which is pretty poor. I'm not trying to be harsh, but it, compared to the C300 one, which I believe is the same as the XF300, I could be completely wrong in this because I've never used an XF300. That viewfinder on that C300 means it works out of the box. Now, it doesn't have things like the waveform in it, and you can use a top screen for that, but it's pretty damn good. And for you me- don't get audio. I'm you afraid- audio at the same time. Now that was Percy who was just trying to carry on editing another piece there. He's a very talented editor, but dude, I'm trying to do something on camera. You also the size? You still want to use a DSLR? Why? Stills? I'm going to use film. Look, medium format like this. All in all, what do I think? Is it a camera that I would buy? I don't need a camera right now, another one. I've already got a C300 and a 1DC and that covers pretty much all my bases, including the 4K. But the main thing I use my 1DC for is actually its B camera in Super 35 mode because it has a wonderful C-Log mode and it matches perfectly with my C300, which this would do too. So it would make sense for me to go down this road if I was looking at a companion camera. Now, if I wasn't, and this was my first purchase of a Super 35 mm camcorder, would I choose this over the FS100? I'm not telling you to do this. I'm saying personally, from my viewpoint and having used the FS100 and know just how amazing that image is, and it's an amazing image. It's just an ergonomically very awkward camera to use and has no built-in ND, and that's the killer. Having that built-in ND until you've had it, and I've always had it, apart from more recent cameras, I had it all my career, ND filters built in. Using them without it is just a pain. A variable ND is not a substitute for using ND filters on here. Form factor. Everything is really easy to access with the nipple and the menus and everything just makes sense. So slow motion, I don't really use it that much. 99% of my work is normal speed. That's not true. 90% of my work on my note is normal speed and 10% is time lapse. And you don't do time lapse on this very well at all. So you just still camera for that. So look at what the cameras do, list the pros and cons, and please just go out and rent them. Rent them, try them, see what you think, and make a decision. Don't take my word as gospel. Nobody should ever take one single reviewer's word as gospel. Look at as many reviews as you want, and I'm sorry this one has been so late. Sorry about that again. But rent them, try them, then decide. That's the only way you'll know if it's the right camera for you. You're not a cat person? Well, nor was I till I had cats. You're a dog person? That's fine, I like dogs too. I like both, I'm just away a lot and cats are easier. And these guys are like little dogs, aren't you? Anyway, enough about my love of cats. It's time to get back onto the review. And I think, if I remember rightly, I was talking about the... Uh...